Okay, so this is the MUA 5 speed um, four wheel drive 36 inch transmission for the 2.6L Zuzu. Um, this is a corporate Zuzu transmission. Uh, I think they call it the MUA 5. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what the numbers are behind it MUA 5F, MUA 5C. All I know is it's the four wheel drive version. Um, and my earlier video, I was wrong about the rear main seal number. Um, on the four wheel drive model, it comes with a different tail shaft seal. Uh, and so, allegedly, this came out of an Amigo. But anyway, this is what I have a cover off of a two wheel drive, off of a uh, two wheel drive transmission, a little light duty. This is about a 250 pound transmission. The other transmission is probably only about 75 to 100 pounds. The two wheel drive, you know it if you have one. Um, this is what the cover looks like when you pull it off. This cover I'm gonna pull off in a, uh, in a future uh, video and I'm gonna change this seal right here. This is the inner input shaft seal. Uh, I've already removed the fork, the throw out baron, and all that from right here. Um, well, this is just to give you an idea. This little tit, the fork rides on, and all that. And this throughout Baron rides up and down on his sleeve for the clutch. And this inner oil seal right here is important uh, because you don't want to have to pull this transmission back out <coughs> if you don't have to. Um, there's a big Baron behind here, as you can see on here. This this housing is a part of a uh, it houses a bearing so it, it may be a little difficult to wiggle it off when you first undo all your bolts here looks like 10 millimeter um, then you also have a bearing here that holds another shaft in place which is right here for your other gear um, and so this acts as a housing but also it stabilizes your bearing so it's very important so if I were to, to use this, I would clean all this up real good and, and use it. Um, the gasket is really not that important. I, I noticed that it's a real thin gasket, which keeps the tolerance really close to the bearing. Uh, I wouldn't go cutting a big, thick cardboard gasket for this. I'd probably throw some gasket maker on it and uh, put it back together like that. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do when I pull this off. But anyway, I'm going to make some more videos and show you how this works. Um, the bearing uh, that I told you that was right for the tail shaft last time was a, a, a federal, um, was a national brand. It was a 710512. That's the wrong seal for this four wheel drive version of transmission. That's the wrong um, seal. Because uh, it's too big. This is for the two wheel drive MUA 5 speed. Uh, and that's what it looks like. That's for the two wheel only. The four wheel the, uh, is a much smaller bearing and I had to hunt this down doing a lot of cross referencing. Uh, it's a 710247. Original seal that the, this is to replace the original seal for the tail shaft. Now the original seal was made by Honda and put in this Suzuzu transmission because the number that I pulled off the original tail sheet seal was an expired Honda number. So note that. So note that it's a relatively small seal. Goes inside the tail shaft. Go over there and film the tail shaft. So it's a relatively small uh, seal. Oil seal for the rear tail. Slip you up on the four wheel drive. At least for this M MUA uh, 5, 5 speed. Uh, this is not an MSG from what I understand. From what I understand an MSG is a much smaller transmission and it was primarily used below 80, 88 uh, and it generally wasn't used uh, for any of the Zuzus uh, above 1988. Uh, it was used for the early model troopers and stuff like that. So, 
That's to clear up some of the confusion that I've learned. And if somebody knows better, then they can correct me. But the, the seal number for the inner seal right here, once I pull this off to replace, which goes in just like this, is 715, 7, um, one, oh, well, you can read it. Um, so that's to replace that. So we'll, we'll get down to changing that later. Um, and I'll show you the clutch kit that we bought. You wanna slide that box over here? This is what we got. We got a, a, an entire clutch kit. Um, pretty good brand. Um, it's our disc. It's a nice heavy duty disc. It's obviously not a racing disc. Because I have one in the truck now and I hate it. I'm pulling it out. It's a stage 3 clutch. And I'm pulling it out because it's just not good for four wheel driving. And there's no intermediate uh, use on it. It's either all out or all in. Uh, also decided to go with a new, I got this. Uh, also decided to go with a new, uh, and I'm glad that it's a Japan product. Uh, I've also decided to go, so I guess this is called a pressure plate. Um, it's pretty heavy duty. I've also decided, and it's got a lot of fingers, so I like that right here. Um, I've also decided to go with a new flywheel. When I pulled the old, the old transmission, uh, the, the transmission off when I did the conversion, I noticed on the two-wheel drive that all of my pins were sheared off. These dial pins right here that hold the clutch uh, pressure plate in place when you bolt it in, it was sheared off. So when I put the bolts in the flywheel, it was just there was just too much play I found to move the uh, the pressure plate when I bolted it down, which really doesn't sit well with me as far as crankshaft balancing. So uh, that that could you know that that could be a crankshaft failure, uh, rear main bearing failure later down the road. Throw throw the crank off balance like that. I don't like that. Uh, so I bought another flywheel, and uh, of course got good teeth on it. It's a pretty heavy duty part, and it's Japan too. So and in here somewhere should be a new throw out bearing and pilot bearing pilot bearing goes inside the crankshaft itself that's a bitch to get out now he sent that made in China I don't really like that but uh, this throw out bearing is it looks like a run-of-the-mill throw out bearing but we'll be changing all this shit putting it together and show you how to do that uh, this little plastic tool is just to to, to guide your clutch in when you put it together because it's spring loaded and uh, this is so when we put our transmission back in it follows the same groove leads uh, when we're sliding the, tra the transmission into the uh, sliding the input shaft into the clutch this is to line the disc up because the disc is spring loaded we obviously won't have a master cylinder hooked up uh, to be able to disengage the clutch so we're going to have to use this to make sure that we keep the clutch straight. But anyway, you'll, you'll see that later in the video and how that works. Um, let's put this shit back in here for now so we're ready to use it. And this is about 250 bucks on eBay. I imagine parts are probably going to be uh, limited. Uh, you know, when they start selling out. There's not too many more vehicles that use this. Uh, in fact, this seal, this in, uh, this X, this output shaft seal, where is it at? This one, the one that gave me a problem to find. Actually, when I cross-referenced it, uh, 
was hard, so hard to find. It only fit uh, three different uh, three different makes of vehicle, and um, I think most of them are obsolete. So this is your five speed. This shifting lever is a standard trooper slash truck long throw shifting lever which is probably pretty good because it's directly into the tranny and makes contact directly with the fork but I'm pulling it off these four bolts here and I'm putting a remote shifter on it which puts my shifter back here right here a box and allows me to use my con original console and rubber boot kit uh, and I'll be using a remote shifter which just like I said it offsets it back here uses the same little ball to, to shift around this uh, I'm gonna probably leave and just paint these back black again I'm changing both of these sensors out right here so I got them loose already there's just a little check ball in here. I guess the junkyard that got it for me ripped the wires on it. They didn't bother just trying to salvage it. So you can see that little check ball is, you can push it. That uh, is a switch. This is a negative ground switch that just pretty much controls, uh, I think this one controls reverse. And the reverse indicate the reverse lamps and this one over here uh, has another wire I think broken off here yeah this one controls the four-wheel drive so as soon as you go up as four-wheel drive it hits something in here and tells it okay put on the 4x4 four four indicator light and then up and down of course is uh, four-wheel low that's back in two and so all of the oil I drained out of it looked pretty good the transfer case was a little low on oil, I didn't like that. But it still seems like it, it's okay. I didn't, there's magnets inside the drain plug, so I didn't catch any needle bearings, which is what I was really concerned that I was gonna find. But I didn't find any needle bearings stuck to the uh, drain plugs. There's two different drain plugs, one underneath here and one underneath here. And one's for the main tranny and one's for the transfer case. And believe it or not, they're separate compartments, even though one might overflow into the other. You do have to, to add oil to both of them. They use conventional motor oil. As they get more miles on them, you can get thicker with the oil. Depends on the temperature outside. The thicker the oil, the harder it is to shift until the oil warms up. But generally, uh, a lot of people put gear oil in them, but you want to kind of stick, stay away from the 80, 90 weight if you can, uh, because a lot of people claim that it doesn't reach all the parts that it should reach, like a thin oil would, like the needle bearings and such. What I'll probably put in this is probably 1040, just because it's an older tranny. And if it does a little wine down the road, I'll probably put some Lucas oil stabilizer in it and add that to the motor oil in the transfer case and in the tranny. Because this one's probably got at least 150,000 on it. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, doesn't look that worn out. And from the check of the oil, it seems like it's been serviced. Slip yoke tail. Now a fixed yoke tail would be pretty much the same tranny but it, the, the back end would be a little bit shorter and it would have a, it would have a, uh, a uh, fixed yoke, which would be just a round circle. Come over here, bring it around. The rear tail would look like this. The rear tail would look like that, so. If you, find, if you got a tranny with the rear tail that looks like that, then you know. You still have the same type of transmission. You just have uh, a fixed yoke transmission uh, or an automatic. A lot of the automatics come that way. Uh, I had a 1990 Trooper that came with an automatic and it had a fixed tail like that. So.